Right, this is the first section of the central limit theorem. Uh, and this section is actually the central limit theorem. And you've sort of come across this before uh, when you were looking at the sample mean and seeing whether the sample mean had changed if you're doing a hypothesis test. Now, what does all of this mean? It basically means whatever type of distribution you have, so whatever the distribution, um, the sample mean is always normally distributed is normally or is always normally distributed normally distributed for large enough values of n now what do we mean by large enough well normally if our sample size is greater than 50 so basically we're saying whatever distribution we have if we take lots of different samples of size um, n and ideally we want n to be greater than 50 then the mean of all those samples is also normally distributed and we can use something called the central limit theorem to do calculations on this sample mean so you know to work out how many what's the probability that that sample mean is going to be greater than a certain value or smaller than a certain value and this um, sample mean by the central limit theorem will have a distribution which is normally distributed with a mean which is the mean of the population mean of population and a variance which is the variance of the population divided by the sample size variance of population divided by our sample size and we're saying really to apply this central limit theorem we want that sum sample size to be greater than 50 okay sample size of 9 which is quite small is taken from a population with that distribution find a probability that the sample mean is more than 11 right so our population yeah is distributed like this yeah it's a normal distribution it has a mean of 10 and it has a standard deviation of 2 square root of 2 squared our sample distribution is also going to be normally distributed that's because of this central limit theorem that basically says that happens will also have a mean of 10 um, the variance of this will be the variance of the population divided by the square root of the sample size yeah so remember um, yeah the variance of our sample mean is going to be um, the variance of the population divided by the square root of the sample size that that you will be used to you should have seen that in statistics and mechanics two in uh -huh. year two and what we need to do is calculate the probability that the sample mean is greater than 11 so it's all about finding that area there. So we can use our calculator. So we are going to do um, menu seven and two, normal CD, should be used to that. Lower value of 11, upper value, well, let's choose any big number we like. Um, 
standard deviation. So that's going to be 2 divided by the square root of 9, which is basically 2 divided by 3, and a mean of 10. And let's write down all the um, distribution information. So the sample mean is also normally distributed, mean of 10, and a variance of 2 squared over 9. And we've worked out the probability that this sample mean is greater than 11. And from my calculator, 0 0.0, okay, for four decimal places, 668. Right, so in this one, we've got a six sided dice, um, and it's relabeled so there are three faces marked with a one two faces marked with a three and one face marked with a six the dice is rolled 40 times and the mean of the 40 scores is recorded find an approximate distribution for the mean of these scores so this is almost like um, 40 samples taken yeah so if 40 samples have been taken, it, in this case, n would be 40. Now in this case, what's x gonna stand for? So it's just basically gonna be the, the score on a dice. Okay, the number on a dice. So the number on the dice after you roll it. Uh, well, we want to work out what the mean and variance of that is. So this is like our population, basically. So we're going to write down what the outcomes are. So it's one, three, six. What are the probabilities? Well, to get a one, we're all out of six because it's got six sides, this dice, but it's renumbered. There are three faces marked with a one, two faces marked with a three, which means that there's one face marked with um, once uh, uh, a six, we need to work out what the mean and the variance of this is. So the mean is going to be one times three over six plus three times two over six plus six times one over six. So that's going to be basically a half plus one plus one so that's two point five two and a half we want the variance of this as well var x now remember we've done this already var x is e of x squared minus e of x which we've just worked out so e of um oh that's all squared the mean all squared so e of x squared is going to be um 1 squared times 3 over 6 plus 3 squared times 2 over 6 2 over 6 plus 6 squared times 1 over 6 so that's e of x squared and then we need to take away the mean squared so minus 2.5 squared so let this, let's work this out and see what we get so the first bit in brackets, I get on my calculator 9.5 or 19 over 2 minus 2.5 squared. So I'll work that out. Minus 2.5 squared, mean squared. And I get 13 over 4, which is 3.25. So 13 over 4, which is 3.25. Okay, so we've got our mean and variance of the population and uh, find an approximate distribution for the mean of these scores. So the mean of these scores is also going to be normally distributed with a mean, which is the mean of the population, which is 2.5 or 5 over 2. And the variance of this 
uh, population, uh, sorry, the variance of this of this mean is going to be the variance of the population divided by n, which is 40, because we're taking 40 samples. Then part b, that's the easy bit. So use your approximation to estimate the probability that the mean is greater than 3. So if it helps, we can draw a normal distribution for the sample mean. So all the information about it is just above it. So this is 2.5 here. The variance of this is going to be the square root of 3.25 over 40. And we want to work out what's the probability that the mean is greater than 3. So we want to work out this area here. So if we're not on menu 7 yet on our calculator and normal CD, let's do that. So a lower value of 3, um, an upper value, any large number will do. We'll type in the square root of 3.25 um, divided by 40 and a mean of 2.5 press equals and so the probability that the mean is greater than 3 is equal to 0 0.0397 to 4 decimal places. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 5a on pages 78 to 80 just remembering that if we've got our population here which is normally distributed and um, with a mean of this of mu and a standard deviation of sigma squared then if we take samples of n, samples of size n, then those the mean of those samples of size n will also be normally distributed. The mean of that will also be the same as the mean of the population, but the uh, variance of this will be the variance of the population over n which means that the standard deviation of this sample mean is going to be the standard deviation over root 0.0397